Well, Merry Christmas. Good to see you guys, kind of. <laughs> it's a little bright, but I can see your shapes. Christmas is a really big deal around our house and growing up. Um, everything was about Christmas starting in about August, sometimes July, uh, especially in terms of Christmas music. My dad has so many Christmas tapes and CDs. He has some that I don't think have even been recorded yet, but they're in his collection already. And uh, at one point, I almost thought I'd have to give up my bedroom as a kid so he'd have a place to store his Christmas music. No, not really. But I'm sure we have hundreds of uh, Christmas songs and Christmas tapes at home. And, and growing up with all the Christmas stuff, one of the things that I've heard people say so often is, remember the reason for the season. You guys heard that? Remember the reason for the season. So then you have to think, what is the reason for the season? And it's really easy to just say Jesus is the reason for the season. But what does that actually mean? That Jesus is the reason for the season. It's a celebration of Jesus' birth. But why is that even significant? You know, a lot of people have been born, and we're not celebrating them today and singing songs about them. What was significant about Jesus being born? Around 700 B.C., there's a prophet named Isaiah, and he's looking around at the darkness and the depravity of his world. And he, he looks up at the stars and he says, oh, God, that you would rend the heavens and come down. And really, that's what religion is all about. People trying to tap into a higher power. People trying to tap into some extra help. Because deep inside, we all know there's got to be more than this. And what's interesting is that even the people who seem to have everything are the people who are still searching the hardest. You look at all the top celebrities, you look at all the top politicians, and they're all falling into drugs and sex scandals and all these things because the, even though they have everything to people like us, they still don't have what they're looking for. They're looking for something bigger, looking for God to come down. We need God. And throughout history, there have been a lot of grand attempts to connect to God. Even people who call themselves Christians are still trying to connect with God. And I want to tell you, that is the point of Christmas. Christmas is an answer to the prayer of Isaiah and to every person who has ever reached out. Christmas is when God rended the heavens and came down. Christmas is a time of open heavens. You know the verse, John 3.16, God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that anyone who believed in him would not perish, but have eternal life. And Jesus himself said, I came that you may have life and life to the full, an abundant life. And then the Apostle Paul, when he described the kind of life that comes through Jesus, he called it the life that is really life. And I believe there's a profound difference between existing and living. There's a difference between breathing and being alive. And there were a lot of people who were existing and breathing in the day of Isaiah. There were a lot of people breathing and existing before Jesus was born. And Jesus came and invaded that with life that is really life. One of the names that was given to Jesus was Emmanuel. God said they're going to call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Christmas, the reason for the season, the reason Jesus was born, was so that the heavens could be split 
and there will be no separation, and God would be with us. When Jesus was born, all of history changed. My friend Surprise from Mozambique says that heaven was unzipped when Jesus came. It was a significant, very significant thing because humanity as a whole has royally rebelled against God. At some point or other, as much as we want God, most of us have decided in, in, in one instance or another or maybe many instances over and over to raise our fist at heaven and say, God, I'm going to do it my own way. I've done that and you've done that. There's a law written on our hearts that tells us what God requires. And there are a lot of times we haven't followed through with that. And you know, when God gave his, his rules and his laws in this book, you may have read them. When God described them, he said, these are commands I'm giving you for your own good. He's not a mean rule giver trying to mess up our lives, but he's trying to give us things that will protect us. And every time that you and I have decided to do it our own way, we shipwreck our own lives. And that's exactly what Jesus stepped into. He stepped into a world of shipwrecked lives and people who are desperate for something to change. People like Isaiah who said, God, you've got to come down and help us. What's amazing is the angels showed up at Christmas, the first Christmas, and they said, hey, God's in a good mood, and he's not mad at you. People didn't know that. They thought he was. If you don't believe what I just said, I'm going to read it to you. Luke 2, 10 through 14. I won't tell you to look at it in your Bibles because you probably couldn't read it in this light anyway, could you? Luke 10 through 14. I'm going to start a little bit earlier. Verse 8, it says, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. Why? Because they thought God's mad. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Okay, that includes you. That includes me. They brought good news of great joy that is for us. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. These angels brought the news. Hey, God's in a good mood, and he's not mad at you. He loves you, and he's about to release peace into your life. The areas of your life where you feel like everything is spinning out of control so fast, you're going to wreck. He's going to bring peace to that. He's going to say, still, no more spinning. And it says, to men on whom his favor rests. You realize that when God said that, he wasn't talking to very holy people. He was talking to normal people. In fact, it says, this will be good news to all the people. To the worst person. God says, I'm going to give my favor. I'm sending favor. I like you. And the angel said, he is Christ the Lord. Now, these shepherds were Jewish boys, and they knew what that meant. They knew that the angels, the angels were talking about the anointed one. That's what Christ means, the anointed one. And the same guy, Isaiah, who had asked God to come down.
he had described the anointed one. And I want to read this to you. As soon as I get my notes together here. He was describing what this anointed one, the Christ, would be like. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. It says those people will go on to rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. So this anointed one comes into the middle of the worst situations and flips everything around. He's anointed by the Spirit of God with power to do that. And when Isaiah said, Oh God, that you would rend the heavens and come down, he had already written this. And he knew this is what was coming. So he, when he was saying, Oh God, rend the heavens and come down, he was saying, Send us the anointed one who's going to flip this all around. And I love... I love verse 3. It says that he will bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes. And then in the end of that verse, it says they will be called oaks of righteousness. You know what ashes come from? Burned trees. Burned things. And God is going to take everything that you think is nothing. It's just ashes. You can't even recognize it and restore it back to what it was in the first place. For his splendor. So that's who Jesus was. He came to flip all of this stuff around. He came to heal the blind. And you know, one of the things I love about this story is that It's also in Matthew 2. It says that the people who got the news were not the best people. You know, we have the shepherds. We don't even know their names. We don't even know which outfit they worked for, cowboys. (laughs) What brand was on those sheep? I don't know. (laughs) We know nothing about them. They're just out there, forgotten by the rest of the community doing hard labor, blue-collar guys. And God appears to them and says, I'm going to give you everything, news of everything the world has been waiting for. So Christmas means that there's an open heaven for normal people, forgotten people. And then in Matthew 2, it talks about how the Magi saw the star in the sky. And Magi weren't perfect people either. In fact, they were in the wrong religion. Today, we would consider them New Age astrologers. And God released the message to them. People who were not even in the right religion. You know, God loves people who are not in the right religion. God loves people who don't have a religion. God loves Buddhists, God loves Muslims, New Agers. He even loves Christians. God loves prostitutes. And he releases his message of open heavens. I'm going to take your ashes and I'm going to make them into beauty. That's what Christmas is about. Jesus was born. In Acts 10.38, it says that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, with the Holy Spirit and with power 
and he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil. For God was with him. Every person who had been under the weight of Satan's attacks on their lives, everything going wrong, Jesus came to redeem them. 1 John 3, 8 says that the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. Everything that's destroying you and I, Jesus came to destroy it so we could be free. You know, and th these stories are recorded in the Bible because I believe God wants us to know there's an open heaven for everyone. And if there's anything I want you to hear tonight is that heaven is open for you right now because Jesus came. So whatever impossibilities you have in your life, God can flip that around. God laughs at impossibilities. He overcomes impossibilities for fun. <laughs> whatever part of your body that's broken down and not in good health. He loves to heal those things. Whatever part of you is tormented by darkness, God loves to set you free. There's somebody here tonight, you've been having nightmares for a long time, and uh, God's setting you free from that. Wow. Right now. Not when someone prays for you, right now. I can, just, I can just feel God crying because he's felt your pain about the nightmares. Like, you don't even want to go to bed at night. You try to stay up because you have nightmares. You stay up as long as you can. You read a book. I see you sitting in a chair. You're reading a book with a little lamp next to you, kind of a rocking, moving type chair. And God wants you to know that he sees you. And he cares about what you've gone through. And he's going to restore even the, the health you've lost. And um, there's people who have lost jobs. God's going to get you new jobs and give you jobs back that you weren't supposed to lose. Wow. And um, I also feel like there's, there's someone here you had, um, maybe more than one person, you have an injury and it was someone else's fault that you had that injury. And um, God wants to heal you right now. So I just release healing over your bodies from the Lord. Because there's an open heaven. Jesus came for an open heaven. This isn't from me. It's because there's an open heaven that Jesus opened for you. And, and there's healing coming into your body. Because God cares about you. If, if you were one of those people, with, you've got an injury because of someone else's fault. Maybe it was a car accident. Maybe somebody dropped something on your foot. I don't know. <laughs> but God wants to release healing. Just, just reach out your hands in front of you right now and say, God, I'll take that. You know, the scripture says that when Jesus was crucified, the veil in the temple was torn in two. That was a big deal. There was a veil in the temple that separated people from the place of the temple where the presence of God was, the holy of holies, the most holy place. When Jesus died, that veil was ripped in two from top to bottom. Some scholars say that that veil was several inches thick, and it was ripped from the top. It was God's initiative, not somebody just trying to play a prank. And the reason that happened was because God wanted everyone to see that he was coming out to be with them. God really likes you. And he doesn't want to live in a temple or a building or a church built by people. He wants to live with you. Emmanuel, God with you. Every time we're singing these songs, Emmanuel, it means God with us. And you know, Jesus is doing all this stuff today. There's still an open heaven because of what Jesus did. I have a friend named Mark Anderson who's a, a missionary 
and he goes into India. Mm, 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 mm. I love it when cell phones ring in church because it gives me a chance to dance a little more. Um, but he's in India, and he um, just recently, you can actually find this on YouTube, Mark Anderson. Um, he went to a school that was specifically for deaf kids. Every kid in the school is completely deaf or partially deaf where they can't be in a normal classroom and learn. So he went to this school to do a concert. He's also a a worship leader. Did you hear me? He went to a deaf school to do a concert. (laughs) That doesn't work. (laughs) So he goes to this school, and you can see on the video... He's speaking, and they've got people doing sign language to the kids so they know what Mark is saying. And he starts telling them about how Jesus came and how Jesus went around doing good and healing all who are under the power of the devil. And he talked about how Jesus healed the blind, and he raised the dead, and he healed the deaf. And that Jesus is alive today doing the same things. So then Mark and a couple of people that were with him on his team started going around the school. All the kids were gathered there for the concert. And they started praying for them. 70 out of 80 kids were healed instantly on the spot. That was not 2,000 years ago. See, this is good news to all people for all times right now. And then in the video, you see as my friend Mark gets up and plays his guitar, and these kids are hearing music for the first time in their life, dancing, freaking out, praising Jesus. And then they ask Jesus in their heart because they want to know this God who just healed them, who gave them their life back, who took their ashes and turned them back into what they're supposed to be, gave them a beautiful life again. And God wants to do the same thing for you. So I just want to challenge you guys. Don't remember the reason for the season. Experience the reason for the season. That's the point of everything we're doing tonight. We don't want to talk about him like he's not in the room. He's here right now. Revelation 3.10 says, That Jesus is standing at the door and knocking and saying, if you open the door, I'll come in. See, Jesus has been released from God the Father to bring good stuff into your life because God's not mad at you. He loves you. And if you'll open the door to him, he's going to release it. He'll come in. There were a lot of people at that first Christmas who were told about Jesus and they didn't do anything about it. But there are a couple of shepherds, a couple of normal people, a couple of New Agers doing magic tricks they weren't supposed to. (laughs) And they believed and they came to Jesus and they experienced him. So we're gonna we're gonna end with prayer tonight. I just want to invite you to close your eyes. And God has something for you tonight. So I would just encourage you to, if you'd like, just put your hands out in front of you like you're about to receive a gift. And if you you want this open heaven stuff, this favor of God, this peace from God to invade your life, to flip your situation back right side up again, then I just encourage you, just say, Lord, come in. Thank you, Jesus, for opening the heavens for me. And now, God, I just pray that your peace will begin resting on each one here. Lord, especially people who feel like their life is spinning out of control and they don't know why things are happening the way they're happening. God, I pray that you just bring your peace. 
even peace that doesn't make sense, but it just works. Lord, let that peace come now. Let your power, let your light invade their lives, God. I see specifically some of you, um, some of you sitting in this middle section, I see some confusion lifting off of your heads because he's the light of the world. He lights up dark places. Some of you haven't known where you're going to make your next step and he's going to illuminate the next step for you to see. And if you want this stuff, I just encourage you also to just say, Lord, I want you all the time in my life. I want your presence all the time. I want God with me all the time. Thank you, Lord. And you know, a lot of us have done things with our lives that we really shouldn't have. We've done some things where we deliberately disobeyed God and, and we've hurt other people. And we've got a lot of shame and guilt hanging around us and we don't, we don't know if God would really actually like to be with us or do anything for us. And I want to tell you, Jesus wasn't just born. Jesus died. And the reason he died was someone had to take the punishment for that bad stuff. And Jesus did it for you. So I want you to know that there's justice too. God likes you, and he's already taken care of your sin, the bad things, the shameful things, all those things you're guilty of, and they've been put on Jesus. That's why he went to the cross. So your sins and my sins can be forgiven. If, if you want your sins wiped out, just say, Jesus, I just trust you to wipe out my sins. Thank you for dying for me. For taking the punishment I deserve. So I could be free. Yeah. Amen. Well, I am really excited. And not only did Jesus come, but he's coming back. You know, Jesus was raised from the dead. Not even death could hold him down. And he's coming back. And right now, his spirit is resting on you. And that's a reason for a very Merry Christmas. If you need any prayer tonight, or if, uh, if one of the things I described is something that's going on in your life, um, you can come up to the front afterwards, and there's a few of us that would love to pray for you. But otherwise... Go tear into those presents. <gasps> Wait, I, I'm ending too soon. Oh, no. We have to do candles. <laughs> Get churchy. All right. <clears throat> We're going to sing a worship song and light our candles. I completely forgot. All right. We've got to do our, our candle thing. So I'm going to hand it over to the safety man. <laughs> Was that a good word? Whoa, good word tonight. God was here tonight just encouraging, speaking, offering hope, life, and uh, possibility. Wow. I'm going to invite you to stand right now. And, uh, you, hopefully you received a candle when you came in. And um, what we're going to do tonight is um, uh, we're going to have a few of our ushers that didn't get appointed so I need a few of you guys who normally would do this to uh, come on up here and uh, sure yeah. and uh, what we're going to do is as, as we sing um, these guys are going to come with their lighted candle to the end of your row 
And uh, what we want you to do is keep your hand, your candle upright. Excuse me. No, they're going to hold their candle upright, light it, and you're going to tip your in, unlit candle into their flame. And uh, as soon as it gets going, get it back up there again. Uh, we're just trying to keep the wax off everything. And we don't want anybody's hair to catch on fire and all that stuff. So uh, the fire marshals get nervous about these candlelight services. <laughs> But, um, and then you do the same, that you will, uh, you will offer your candle to the person next to you upright, and they will tip their candle into yours. And, and, uh, and we're just going to, we're just going to uh, worship as we go out tonight, and, uh, and we'll all, we'll all get lit up, and then we'll uh, have a chance to lift our candles together, and then, uh, and then we'll be done. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And he who believes in me would no longer walk in darkness, but would have the light of life. So tonight, Lord, we just thank you that you came as the light of the world. And we thank you that your light can now become our light. We worship you for light that has come into our darkness. And we just love your presence, Lord. So let's sing together. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. You open my eyes, let me see Beauty that made this heart adore you Hope of a life spent with you So here I am to worship
the darkest place you light overcomes mm. we say that we love you we say Lord thank you for coming into our world for splitting open the skies loving us the way that you do so perfectly, so wonderfully and Lord we just dedicate all that we're going to do now in the next 24 hours to you for your glory and for your honor all the people that we hug and kiss and all the presents that we give and, and uh, the smiles that we share, our laughter, any songs that we sing, all the different things that we're going to do, Lord. We do it because you started the whole thing in the gift that you gave to us and the way that you wrapped your arms around us. We say, happy birthday, Jesus. Oh, lift your candle high. Wow. Jesus said, you now are the light of the world. He said, don't hide your light. <laughs> lift it high so that others can be drawn to it. As we lift our candles into the darkness of this room, we realize the power that we have to change our own world because of Jesus in us. Would you commit yourself tonight to be his son, his daughter, and to follow him all your days and to change this dark world? Thank you.